So the first time I, s I saw the book uh, and the cover of the first book from Aaron Blaby, you know, the bad guys, it was just an absolute, you know, mind blower. Uh, I had see I saw in this cover a whole world of, you know, Quentin Tarantino, especially Reservoir Dogs. I saw a little bit of the usual suspects as well. And for me, it was immediately a, 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 a click. So went straight to the drawing board, immediately did a quick sketch of those characters just to impregnate myself of the idea of these characters. But mostly what I saw was a giant, enormous idea. The idea of these five legendary animals that we all are scared of, and these guys decide to go good. Uh, the idea of using the villains of every story and just get them to turn into good guys. Um, but yet we could treat this as a heist movie, as the, the, you know, in the fashion of Soderbergh and, and Guy Ritchie, and again Tarantino, and then, and then really just make, build a whole world around this because it never had been done before in animation. It's so exciting to direct a film like this just because you have so much opportunity to explore a whole world. First of all, it's a big homage to Los Angeles. We're treating like the whole the whole background of this film is set in LA, uh, a city that, that we love, that I love, uh, and 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 it's really an homage to the lighting and and the skyline of this city. You know the messiness of this place, and yet the incredible incredible graphic quality of it. It's also so exciting to be doing a film in that genre. The movie is obviously very uh, inspired by um, the highest genre type of movies. We started with. Um, that reference to uh, Tarantino uh, and decided to just what if we made a Tarantino movie for children? Uh, obviously, you know, you can't really do that. It's, it's, uh, it's too um, very, very much adult. So we shifted a little bit and there's still tons of homage to, to Tarant Tarantino's work, but we shifted a little bit more towards, you know, Shane Eleven and Soderbergh and Guy Ritchie and these kind of influences. But really the point was to make to use those cool influences and just infuse that in the tone of the film. We tend to be so judgmental so very quickly of how somebody looks or how somebody was raised. Um, and this is why, you know, they've been stereotypes their whole life. We made story about the big bad wolf and, and, and films about the great white sharks. And we have, you know, phobias of spiders and snakes and... But they are not necessarily true. Those animals are barely dangerous, you know, they are not dangerous, they are beautiful animals. And so they, they face that kind of stereotyping. I think it's a metaphor for much more stereotyping that we all face as humans. But, um, but in the end, really the message of this movie is, you know, the actions that you take or what you do really define you as opposed to what you are and what your nature is or what you look like. The design of the character evolved uh, quite a bit, obviously. Um, uh, we started by trying to be uh, a little closer to uh, what Aaron had drawn and then, but at the same time I also wanted to make it my own universe, you know, and bringing my own um, uh, influences to it and which are very much, you know, uh, a French sense of design and graphism and also, but influenced by a lot of the anime style. I really was inspired by the, you know, the Miyazaki and, you know, Sherlock Hound uh, and the Cowboy Bebop style for, for Mr. Wolf. Um, and, and like from there, you kind of uh, gradually figuring out the rest of the cast. It was a combination of so many things, you know, my, my own influences, the animation style that I wanted to get, the inspiration from the books themselves, and aging it up and making it really modern, you know. What happened? Did we blow up? Is this heaven?